Decades come and go, but the movies are forever. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 best movies of the decade. It's only second week of the summer and there's already been a dead fish in the pool. We were doing an experiment. We were trying to get it back alive. For this list, we're taking a look at movies released from 2010 to 2019 that will not only be remembered as classics in the years to come, but also served to define the decade. Since this was especially difficult to narrow down, we're leaving off animated features. Honestly, between Toy Story 3 and Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, there are so many options on the animated front that they can make up their own list. Number 10. Avengers Endgame Given this franchise's widespread impact and universal success throughout the decade, this list would not be complete without at least one entry from the MCU. I am inevitable. Black Panther proved that superhero movies have the power to break barriers and break into the best picture race. But if we have to single out one movie that epitomized why this cinematic universe is a cinematic achievement, it would have to be Avengers Endgame. Captain, Steve, sorry, America, Rogers. Look, if you do this and it doesn't work, you're not coming back. Thanks for the pep talk, Pissant. For over 10 years, we watched the Infinity Saga unfold, and this tour de force marked its epic culmination. Avengers! Assemble. Finding just the right balance of old and new, the film brings everything full circle with laughs, tears, and thunderous applause. As the credits roll, it doesn't feel like you've merely watched a movie. It feels like an important milestone. Number 9. Arrival the 2010s proved to be a breakout decade for director Denis Villeneuve, who explored a wide variety of different styles and genres. It was his foray into sci-fi, however, that fascinated us the most. Dr. Banks, you can start. Arrival warrants comparison to the likes of Steven Spielberg and Stanley Kubrick, but maintains a signature that belongs to Villeneuve alone. When some spacecraft arrive on Earth, it's up to one linguist to decipher the reason. For Dr. Banks. Is this really the right approach? Trying to teach him how to speak and read? That's gotta take longer. You're wrong. It's faster. The film keeps the audience guessing until the very end, which is every bit as poignant and inspiring as one would hope. How can you know the future? In a decade where immigration and cultural divide were among the most prevalent topics, Arrival is an absorbing parable that demonstrates the importance of communication and listening to others. Number 8. Django Unchained For three decades, Quentin Tarantino has remained one of the industry's most distinctive and exhilarating voices. Among the three films he made during the 2010s, Django Unchained was arguably his most audacious outing, as well as his most fun. His name is Django. He's a free man. He can ride what he pleases. Like a master chef, Tarantino combines several ingredients that most people wouldn't dare put into one pot. With Tarantino adding his own special seasoning, though, it comes out as a perfect fusion of different tastes. How do you like the bounty hunting business? Kill white folks and they pay you for it? What's not to like? The film is an outrageous satire not unlike Blazing Saddles, a black exploitation flick not unlike Shaft, and a spaghetti western. Not unlike, well, the 1966 film Django. It's also an effective buddy picture with Jamie Foxx and Christoph Waltz creating the most memorable Western duo this side of Butch and Sundance. Number 7. Hereditary This decade was a horror renaissance, but no other movie disturbed us to the core quite like Hereditary. <laughs> A supernatural horror drama such as this easily could have come out in the late 60s or 70s, drawing parallels to classics like Rosemary's Baby, The Exorcist, and The Omen. It's hard to breathe. What do you mean? I think my throat's getting bigger. At the same time, Hereditary still feels like a product of the 2010s, touching upon mental health and trauma with a modern sensibility. You tried to kill me. No, I love to kill you. Me. I Why love did you try you. to kill me? I did. I was trying to save you. Why did you try to kill me? Tony Collette dominates the screen as a woman who's either being torn apart by an evil presence or the madness within. Whereas so many other horror films literally jump out at the audience, director Ari Aster lures us in with tense foreshadowing and subtle scares, leaving us completely unprepared when insanity takes over. Number six, The Wolf of Wall Street. 
Although it's mainly set in the 80s and 90s, the story of Jordan Belfort feels all too relevant in today's world. We live in an era where big business reigns supreme. Fugazi, it's a uh, fake. Yeah, Fugazi, Fugazi, it's a wazi, it's a woozy, it's a... In Belfort's eyes, the little guy is so insignificant that we never even see the countless people he scammed over the years. John, one thing I can promise you, even in this market, is that I never ask my clients to judge me on my winners. I ask them to judge me on my losers because I have so few. Instead, Martin Scorsese's electrifying biopic focuses on how a Wall Street mogul sold his soul in exchange for the American dream. A fancy mansion, luxury vehicles, and so much cash you could drown in it. You just tried to bribe a federal oh, officer. No, technically ah, I didn't bribe anybody. Oh, no, that's not the that's, No, no, no. Jordan. According to the U.S. criminal code, there needs to be an exact dollar figure for an exchange oh. of services. That would not hold up in a court of law. You need those fucking not how I heard it. In other words, greed and the American dream have become one and the same. Leonardo DiCaprio portrays Belfort as a con artist who's beyond despicable, yet so charming we'd still probably buy his pen. Number 5. Inception If the 2000s put Christopher Nolan on the map, the 2010s solidified his status as a master of filmmaking. Reyes, get back here now! Go, go, go. I can't make it. Go! Interstellar was perhaps Nolan's most heartfelt film to date, but Inception opened our minds to bold new ideas. Now, more than ever, Hollywood seems reliant on established properties to pack theaters. Only use details, uh, a, a street lamp or a phone booth, never entire areas. Why not? Because building a dream from your memory is the easiest way to lose your grasp on what's real and what is a dream. Is that what happened to you? Inception stood out as an anomaly, an original, standalone story that not only excited us, but also challenged the audience to think. We need you there to tailor compounds specific to our needs. Which are? Great depth, a dream within a dream, two levels, three. We've all heard the phrase, a riddle wrapped in a mystery inside an enigma. Well, Inception is a heist thriller wrapped in a sci-fi extravaganza inside an enigma. It's a film that triggers the imagination and still invites analysis 10 years later. In short, this is the stuff that dreams are made of. Number 4. Moonlight Moonlight signified a major shift in Hollywood, both for indie filmmaking and representation. Come on! You want these fools to pick on you every day? The word diversity has been thrown around a lot during the early 21st century and for good reason. Whereas many movies are obvious in how they address race, gender, and sexuality though, nothing is ever spelled out in Moonlight. Yeah, hey, you trying to get smart with me, huh? This best picture winning drama requires its audience to look closer, making them see that there are multiple sides to every human being. A drug dealer can actually be an affectionate father figure. A juvenile delinquent can actually be a scared little boy trying to survive in an unaccepting world. Everyone is forced to fit the mold they were born into. Through love and understanding, however, our protagonist may come to embrace his true identity. Number 3. Mad Max Fury Road In today's blockbuster landscape, audiences are used to seeing movies with excessive CGI, overly complicated plots, and repetitive action. How much more can they take from me? Got my blood, now it's my car! Fury Road was the complete opposite, emphasizing practical effects and stunts, keeping the story as simple as possible, and putting so much thought into the composition of the action that individual stills could hang in a museum. <laughs> While not exactly a sequel or a reboot, Fury Road takes the best aspects from George Miller's previous Mad Max films and pushes them into overdrive. Three times the gates were opened to me. What gates? I was awaited in Valhalla. They were calling my name. The best way to describe the film is the climactic chase of the road warrior sustained for two hours. Although that sounds incredibly straightforward, the film's emotive characters, inventive production values, and high-octane direction set a new standard for the genre. You know, hope is a mistake. If you can't fix what's broken, you'll, um, you'll go insane. Number 2. Get Out Hereditary may have been scarier, but Get Out challenged preconceived notions about horror and film. 
It's by no means the first movie to blend horror with dark comedy and satire, but Get Out made us think about current racial and social tensions in ways we never anticipated. By the way, I, I would have voted for Obama for a third term if I could. Best president in my lifetime, hands down. I agree, yeah. And in doing so, it attained heights rarely seen within the genre. And this all came from the mind of a former Mad TV cast member. Sink into the floor. Wait, 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 wait. Sink. While writer-director Jordan Peele has always been a great talent, the 2010s saw him emerge as one of the decade's defining voices. You'll be able to see and hear what your body is doing, but your existence will be as a passenger. Seamlessly mixing homage with original concepts, Peel should remain every bit as prominent in the 2020s and beyond. But for now, his debut feature is his magnum opus. I mean, I told you not to go in that house. So how many of these amazing movies did you see? Did you see them all in the theater? Do you have any idea what we've slotted in at number one? Or at least what year it's from? All right, let's run through some honorable mentions, and then we'll name our pick for best movie of the decade. I'm an attorney, Dimitri. I'm obligated to proceed according to the rule of law. Not agreed. This stinks, sister. Did you just throw my cat out the window? The images you're turning in? They're cool. You're looking at things in a really unique way. Got a lot of natural talent. Thanks. Yeah, but that 50 cents will just get you a cup of coffee in this whole world. You see, this is where you belong. George Washington Bridge, you throw yourself off the Brooklyn Bridge, traditionally. George Washington Bridge, who does that? What was he, a dumbbell? What do you do? I do many, many things. I am a writer, a doctor, a nuclear physicist, a theoretical philosopher. But above all, I am a man. Hopelessly inquisitive man, just like you. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, the social network. When the social network hit theaters, Facebook was still a relatively new phenomenon. Jump ahead 10 years, and it's impossible to imagine the world without this social media platform. Hey Cameron, I'm still a little skeptical that we have enough functionality in the site to really draw the attention and gain the critical mass necessary to get a site like this to run. Together, director David Fincher and writer Aaron Sorkin shaped the story of Mark Zuckerberg into a modern Shakespearean drama. You don't think I deserve your attention? I think if your clients want to sit on my shoulders and call themselves tall, they have a right to give it a try, but there's no requirement that I enjoy sitting here listening to people lie. You have part of my attention. You have the minimum amount. The question is whether this is a story of triumph or tragedy. It's hard to say since Facebook's story is far from over. For now, though, this film depicts a legendary origin story that was relevant in 2010 and remains very much a part of the zeitgeist in 2019. Drop the the. Just Facebook. It's clear. Expertly crafted, brilliantly written, flawlessly acted, and timely while also being timeless. We can't think of a better film to represent the past decade of cinema. Welcome to Facebook. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.